PFP. And as you just uh, seen, uh, we, we, we are recording the session because then we want to share it later on on YouTube. Also, uh, yeah, I've seen people changing the names. Thanks for that. Uh, it would be easier for us then to address you. Uh, then if you can change your to your real name, would be very, very appreciated. And uh, then you're welcome to ask questions. Uh, just raise your hand and then we will call you with a, uh, when uh, to ask the question. So my name is Diego Russo and I will be hosting uh, the session today. Uh, I think we reserved one hour, one hour and a half for this event. Let's see how it goes. Uh, it's not a set time, but uh, let's see how the uh, how it goes with questions and uh, and um, then explaining how this CF uh, CFP works. Um, I uh, we have members for the program team and also the FINET program uh, as well. And uh, before kind of getting to the uh, details, I just want to give an opportunity to the program team and the Finite program uh, team to introduce themselves. So I go, I call Arto. Want to go first? Okay, I can go first. So hi everyone, I'm Artur. I'm one of the program uh, colleagues this year with BB. And uh, yeah, I'm one, also one of the board members and the organizers of the conference. And if you have any specific questions about the CFP, we'll be happy to answer them on the on the call today. Thanks, Arto. BB. Hello, I am BB. Well, my, my name is Fairpal, but go by BB. Um, I am also one of the volunteers with program, and I also help, I also help organize the conference. Um, um, it's nice to have all you, um, you know, all of you over here, and I'm looking forward to answering some of the questions that you have in the next, you know, um, 15, 20, 30 minutes or so on. Um, and yeah, um, I hope you all submit the CFP. Thanks, Vibi. Uh, Theophanis? Hi, everyone. I'm Theophanis. I'm also a volunteer to EuroPython, and uh, I'm in terms of uh, the mentorship program, so you may have seen my name in uh, the mix. And uh, thank you all for, uh, for attending this event. I hope this will be helpful for uh, your proposals and for the CFP. Thanks, Stefanis. And Sebastian? Yeah, hello. My name is Sebastian. I'm part of the, the Finite team. And um, we're here to help you uh, get to the conference, basically. So that's me. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, so I, I guess as a... As a next step, uh, we would like to share a few information about the CFP. And uh, I don't know who wants to start talking about it. Um, uh, I can, yeah. and then- uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, I was looking at you. But, uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure, we did not decide that. Oh, okay, um, um, good evening, good morning, good afternoon for um, everyone. So um, just a couple of quick, quick sort of reminders about the CFP, right? So the CFP would run till this Sunday uh, and, the, and the time at which the CFP would get over is sort of end of anywhere, right? So depending upon your time zone, um, like it would basically be the end of Sunday anywhere, um, uh, you know? So it gives you a bit more time than just Sunday, but yeah, try and put your sort of proposals in beforehand, right? Um, so a um, couple of quick stats from like previous um, CFPs to this one. Um, so last year we got roughly around 400, 450 proposals. I, I don't remember the exact one, but something like that. We accepted roughly around 25 to 30% um, of those. And um, the way our, the way our um, sort of CFP works is that we uh, ask for proposals for three things. One is the talks. Um, the other is the tutorials. The third one is uh, the posters, right? So talks are typically between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Um, in some cases, we also sort of entertain 60 minute talks, um, but our preference this year is of course 30 minutes. Uh, however, the, the time should not stop you from proposing whatever uh, it is that you want to propose. Um, we have like a multitude of tracks. We also have a uh, you know, um, we also have a dummy track wherein like in case you, you're not sure which 
track does your proposal belong in, you can propose a talk in that. So uh, if you feel like your proposal does not fit in one of the tracks that we have predefined, do not let that stop you as well. Um, just feel free to propose it and, and you know, we'll um, sort of get it going. Um, and then like a typical proposal has a title, <laughs> uh, it has an abstract and it has a description, right? Um, uh, just like quick pointers, keep the abstract to the point, um, you know, and keep the description, uh, you know, as informative as possible. However, try to keep it concise, right? So uh, just think of it this way that whenever uh, someone from the program team or our reviewers or the community is voting on your proposal, um, like, uh, you know, assume that everyone has the attention span of a goldfish and, you know, <laughs> then try and write your, um, your proposal. Um, yeah, and then once the, uh, just in terms of timelines, once the proposal, um, um, like once the CFP ends, then there are two things that happen uh, more or less simultaneously. Uh, one is that we kick off the review process of all of the proposals. So each proposal is reviewed by at least two reviewers from our community. And um, uh, essentially each reviewer gives a score from um, you know one all the way till five or one all the way till three, but you get the drift, right? And uh, then we have uh, community voting wherein your proposals are anonymized. So your so uh, even for reviewers uh, for reviewing process, your proposals are anonymized. Um, and please, please, please do make sure that you do not put any um, you know PII in your title, in your abstract, or in your descriptions. Um, we strongly discourage that. And um, uh, the idea is that yeah, we 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 basically. Uh, do the, the reviewing process and then parallelly we do the community voting process and then the program team sits and sort of curates a schedule out of what the community wants, uh, what the reviewer, reviewer, reviewers process, uh, like reviewers think um, about, um, you know, the proposals and so on. Um, so that was like kind of like a quick run through. Um, uh, Artur, if you want to add something then feel free to i think that's that's about right uh, there's not that much to add so as you mentioned the review is anonymous the voting is anonymous yes. uh, we will accept talks in batches so uh, the first uh, the first batch will probably be uh, released sooner and then if we have more talks to decide on that would be decided later uh, but we can expect that about a month after the CFP ends, we will get like a first batch of talks um, published. All right, thanks, Vivi and Arto. So before going to kind of a more uh, details and uh, share kind of advice on how to get uh, a better proposal, these kind of things, I just want to give uh, the, the word to Sebastian to share some uh, information about the FINET program. Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm part of the financial aid team of Europython, and basically our mission is to help people who need financial assistance to get to the conference. So if you're uh, if you want to propose a talk or a workshop um, uh, or a poster and you need assistance to get to the conference, uh, please make sure that you apply for FinAid. You can go to the Europython website and click on FinAid. Uh, and I want to press that even if you have not received a uh, decision yet. Uh, you can already apply for FinAid. That's very important for us so that we can schedule our budget. Uh, we do take into account that you, you may be a speaker. You can indicate on the form that you've submitted a proposal but haven't received a reply yet, or you have received a reply. So I want to urge you, if you need financial assistance, uh, just to apply as soon as possible. Um, FinAid this year is uh, uh, also uses two rounds, with the first round at the end of April. Um, so if you want to have a maximum chance of receiving a grant, make sure that you apply for the before the first deadline. Um, and if you have any questions, you can email us at finate at europython.eu uh, and then we can answer your questions uh, in private. Uh, thanks, Sebastian. Actually, uh, you know what? If you have kind of more generic question that you might want to ask now, actually is a good time uh, to oh. ask uh, about the finate. Uh, uh, and, and I forgot something, so I want uh, to add something. Go. So, uh, and if you need a visa to to visit um, uh, Europython this year, 
uh, do make sure to fill out the visa form. You can also indicate on the visa form that you've applied, uh, that you've uh, made a proposal, which is very important. Uh, and then you can get a visa letter to uh, uh, apply for your visa. So uh, do make sure to do that as soon as possible as well, because obviously uh, it might take some time for your visa application to process. Uh, um, and we and last year that was a bit of a bottleneck in some cases, so do make sure to do that in time. I think I got everything about the visa, right, Raquel? I think so, yeah. Yes, uh, I just also want to mention that when you um, apply for the visa invitation letter, it's also a good idea to indicate that you're a speaker and you have already applied for Finnate if you have done. Yes, thank you. All right, is there any question for Sebastian about Finate? Um, actually, I do have one. Uh, so, for instance, if a speaker uh, submit a proposal and then apply for Finate, but uh, the proposal then is not accepted, what happens? Um, <clears throat> So that's that's a good question. So if you uh, have a, if you have received a grand offer from us, um, uh, that offer will still stand. Okay. Um, well, so yeah. obviously you, you can still make a decision to reject that grant, and then we can allocate it to someone else. That's very important as well. If you don't, if you do not plan on visiting the conference, and then please let us know if you've received finite, so that we can give it to someone else because we want to help as many people as possible. Um, but mostly what, what will typically happen is that you'll receive a grant once we know that you've been accepted. Okay. Um, so we will typically verify that. And typically that's before the, the, we hand out the final grants. Uh, but sometimes you also receive a grant earlier just because uh, <clears throat> we think you're, you're a good case anyway. So basically okay. that. Yeah. Right. Any question for Sebastian? Yeah, I also have one question. Is uh, last year I remember last year I remember that I uh, have like a specific timeline that we need two months, I think, for uh, obtaining a visa. Do you have any information about uh, about this and the country that is hosting right now the, the conference? Question about the visa. So we def definitely recommend that you apply for the visa as soon as possible. The visa application. Um, so we will send you the visa invitation form if you are attending the conference. And but that means you will basically need a ticket, and the ticket sales start is expected to start on the twenty first. You should really apply as soon as possible. Um, Officially, you should still be able to apply 15 days before you're expected to travel, but typically that's not going to be enough. So we would recommend that you apply for this at least a month in advance. And we generally send out the letter in a week. All right, thanks, Raquel. Right, if... Um... Of course, if you have more uh, personal questions, there are the, the contact in the chat, Finet at europeander.eu. Uh, now, if there are no questions on, on Finet, I think we can start asking questions about the program uh, to the program team. Is any anything specific uh, that you want to ask to the to the program team instead? Yeah, go for it, David. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so I guess I'm new to speaking for a conference. Um, do you have some good examples of an abstract and a description that would be good ones that are winners? <laughs> How do I win that contest? Um, I think I have one. Um, if I I can I can find and and send it to you in a sec. But just to just to sort of cover 
quickly what to like what makes a proposal proposal sort of impactful right is um uh, you know uh, is of course like the when it comes to your proposal there are only three things so when there's a title there's a abstract there is a description right so but when, when it comes to the abstract the abstract has to be like very sort of um result oriented and also like it should it should sort of uh, it should portray what exactly are you planning to present during the talk or the tutorial or the poster right so it should essentially talk about um uh, why are you talking about this thing and, and and why should you know like why should a user or like why should a participant come to your talk uh, what would they take away from this that is the most important thing um and also like what would what would be the um like what exactly is is it that you're talking about right so essentially like that's the like three or four lines is is what the abstract is when it comes to a description there are already like there's there's no winning recipe for this but but essentially like it is that you know provide like an outline of what exactly are you going to be covering uh during your talk right so it doesn't have to be like minute by minute outline but it can be like you know certain broad themes that you're covering uh, within the within the talk, right? And um, again, like I would I would emphasize on what's the takeaway, like what does the the participant get through your talk? Um, I would sort of optimize on that, right? And um, I think there was a there was a blog post by uh, um, by someone that I keep referring to uh, every now and then. I'm gonna find it, uh, and if I don't find it during the call, then I'll like send it to you um, over email. Yeah, thanks, Vivi. Um, I think, Uliana, you're next. Yeah, cool, thanks. Um, I guess I have a question to the progress program committee. Um, how do you plan any non-Python uh, related tracks, mainly soft skills development or community development uh what's the percentage of acceptance ratio there like is it different uh from the main track and yeah i have another question but let's cover this so, one first i can quickly take this and 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 arthur feel free to jump in um we don't like we do we don't have like any such like top, you know track specific quotas so to speak right uh, of course like we would not make a schedule wherein there are like 60 django talks or you know 70 machine learning talks uh, no matter how much i would want that uh, but you know uh, the uh, the idea is that uh, we like we don't have like a cut off so to speak and um, what we would uh, what we would typically um, um, do is you know based on what what the reviewers and the community vote for we just we just take all those talks so you know it could be that you know one track has has certain more sort of um um talks you know as compared to all the other ones but yeah um so no quotas uh, second of all we do have we do in fact we do encourage talks about community we do encourage talks about you know uh adjacent sort of python adjacent um um things for example like go with python rust with python i'm um, also like uh, community uh, building soft skills so like in past we've had talks about um you know how uh, how can you sort of um like I, I think there was a talk last year about like mental health and tech there was a talk about how 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 do you create like a sustainable community uh, and so on um we've seen that these kind of talks are 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 really really encouraged by the community as well they you know they 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 like them too so yeah um feel free to um send a proposal on um, any of those uh, topics and if there's something specific that you want to um, do, then yeah, feel free to send us an email as well, uh, or we can just discuss right now as well. All chill. I mean, just Thanks, to integrate, just to integrate on what we said, if you go on the your Python or EU uh, EU slash CFP, then on the first page, then there, there is a list of tracks, and then as you can see, there is arts, craft, and cultures, career, life, and health, community and diversity, DevOps education teaching training so, so there are all sorts of different categories that you can expand it doesn't have to be specifically to some uh python library or python or i mean could be kind of uh generic actually to be honest uh when uh, i attend uh, i do attend EuroPython, python i tend to to 
uh, attend the um, the kind of the, these the more generic talks because I find them very very inspiring. I would say. Um, anything else on these? Uh, anyone else? Uh, I'm just going to add one more thing to the right, to, yes. to the list of tracks that. That list of tracks is just like a starting list of ideas. If there's something that doesn't fit those tracks, you can still submit it and uh, we will look at it. And it it's probably going to be a good proposal. Correct. And 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 actually, I just wanted to say uh, uh, something else on, on what we be said. At, at the end, we want to have uh, a nice program that fits what the community wants. So we need to strike a balance on or what we want to put in the program. So we, yeah, we don't have numbers, but it depends really on what proposal we receive. And then we will do our best to kind of satisfy everyone kind of uh, um, preference. Uh, David, give me one second. Uh, there is Victor uh, who asked a question in the chat. So I read the question out loud. So when should we be expecting to hear the decision of the proposal application? I can give a short overview of the of the timeline. So the CFP ends this uh, this Saturday, this Sunday, sorry, and then we will have the community voting and the review, and that will take um, a couple of weeks. And then after we gather the data from the community voting and from the reviewers, we will do a selection, and that will that means that the first batch of the accepted talks will probably be released about a month after the end of the CFP. And then there's going to be another batch with the rest of the talks, which probably going to take another two or three weeks. And during that time, we will try our best to, to keep everyone in a loop. So if your talk is accepted, we will send you the accepted message. If your talk is delayed to the second batch, we will send you a message that is delayed to the second batch. If it's rejected, then we'll tell you that it's rejected. So we will, we will keep you in a loop regardless of, of what happens with your talk. Thanks, Arthur. I hope uh, Victor these uh, replies to your question. Um, David, do you want to go next again? I think you raised your hand earlier. Sure, yeah. So um, I guess the talk that I'm thinking about is sort of beginner intermediate. What um, what kind of people are attending the EuroPython? Are there beginners, intermediate, mostly advanced, or is it just everybody? So it's kind of like a... Um... It's like a mixed bag, right? So, 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 like we have, um, uh, we have people ranging from you know university students to academics to you know beginner software um, um, engineers to like really advanced core Python developers. Like pretty much everyone um, sort of attends EuroPython, so to speak, right? Um, so people from all walks of life, also like hobbyists, and you know. Uh, people who don't really use Python for their day-to-day -day work, but you know, just just use it for pet projects and so on. Um, so um, I think in general, like there's like irrespective of what level your talk is, um, uh, th there would be an audience for it. You know, at EuroPython. Um, um, yeah, and 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 you know, like um, like this year we do have a slight preference for. Uh, intermediate to advanced level talks uh, just because that that was one of the feedbacks that we got from last year uh, however uh, you know that should not stop you uh, from proposing a beginner or an intermediate um, talk like that's that's just like uh, that's just something that we as the program team would keep in mind um, as, as like the overarching theme when we curate the schedule um, but you know so long as um, the community finds your proposal interesting, the proposal would make it through uh, to, on the conference. Cool. I would like to add one more thing to that. That uh, what is it, it depends on the topic, uh, specific topic of the of the talk, right? Because something that is on the beginner level might still be even for like very advanced talks, they might be beginner in the specific topic that you're covering. So there could be like a hardcore C Python developer, but they know nothing about machine learning. So a beginning level machine learning talk would be 
would be good for them and vice versa there could be somebody that they're phd in machine learning but they've actually done just like very basic python in the jupyter notebook and anything more advanced than decorators is is already advanced python to them so because there's a the python is widely used everywhere and people from all sorts of uh, all walks of life are coming to the conference and there is a big chunk of people who are into data and machine learning and there's a big chunk of of people who use python professionally then those there are beginners in in every subject yes correct so there is a kind of a huge diversity uh across the kind of the python community so uh what you feel what is a, a beginner for you could be not for uh other profiles i would say right okay cool thank you and then do people submit more than one talk to increase their chances or is that well, weird that's, that's a that's a good question um you can submit as many proposals as you want um however we would like one speaker can only speak once at the conference right so if you have like a bunch of interesting things um that you want to talk about feel free to propose them um yeah however bear in mind that we would um, only accept one of those proposals. And if you'd like to submit a, a couple of proposals, you can also indicate which one is your, your favorite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that, that's just in case. But uh, yeah, we tend, we tend to follow one uh, speaker, one, uh, one- One speaker, talk, one proposal. One proposal uh, rule, one talk rule. So one, one talk, yeah. as many proposals, but only one of them will be accepted. So give the chance to as many people as possible to, to speak. But at the same time, if, for example, uh, you send more proposals and then the speaker, somebody canceled last minute, then there might be like a chance to get another slot. But usually we default to one uh, talk per one uh, speaker. Juliana? Yeah, just came into my mind um, talking about the last minute calls for the speaker. Um, do you guys consider having the remote speakers in case something like this, or you only consider having someone on site to speak? Um, so I can tell you how we dealt with this last year. Um, like right now, we like we don't have like a defined strategy for this for this year. But the last year, we basically sent a note out to you know, uh, because of like COVID restrictions or because of travel restrictions, um, some people could not make it. So uh, we sent out an email like one week before, one week to 10 days before um, the conference. And, uh, uh, you know, then we asked people if they would be, uh, if they're still attending the conference, then, you know, would, if they would like to present. And uh, um, so that was a time frame that we, uh, that we sort of uh, uh, did. And, and like pretty much all of them were in, in person. Um, um, at that time right um as far as like remote uh like as far as for as for this year is concerned i think we would know uh, more as we go through the proposals as we go uh, as we see like what kind of um proposals are we getting what kind of proposals are uh you know um how many of them are remote how many of them are in person and so on um we'll see that and then you know we sort of formulate a strategy um based on it I would like to add more context to what, what Hibi said as well. For this year, we are asking in the form whether the talk can be delivered remotely or uh, in person. Once we have all the proposals, we'll have more data to know uh, if there are any, uh, any remote proposals at all. Uh, but we do ask about that. And uh, also, yeah, as, as we mentioned, once we look at the data, we will sort of know more. We, we would prefer speakers on site, uh, but if there are like great talks that physically cannot be delivered from uh, from the venue, then we have an option of, of having them remotely. Um, yeah, thanks, Vivi and Arto. Um, just want to remind that there are a couple of things on the chat. So uh, actually, Ra Raquel uh, replied to, to David about the kind of experience of the of the attend uh, the, of the people attending the Mm, the conference so i think uh from the survey that we ran last year around half of the people uh they said they have uh, a python experience of four to, uh, from four to ten years 
So I would say kind of in, uh, in the intermediate slash advanced. I mean, they 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 don't use Python just for hobby, but I think I would say for more proper usage of Python, just to tailor maybe your kind of uh, your um, presentation, and also we be shared in the chat uh, the link on how to write a successful conference proposal. Yeah, I I would like to add one more thing to that because when you mentioned that like how that the percentage of the audience so even if 50 percent of the audience were professional developers the talk room could still be like 160 to 180 people you can still have a full room of people who are beginners even if majority of the conference is yeah. uh, professionals with lots of experience because there's a thousand people in the in the building so there's uh, there's still a lot of uh, you know room to work with Um, I think VB is, uh, is going to drop. Thanks, VB. Uh, thanks for hey, joining us today. And talk bye soon. bye. Talk soon. Right. I would to ask something like uh, maybe we if we can sell uh, the metrics from last year, like how many talks we had and what was the acceptance ratio? So last year we had. 429 proposals, I think, and we accepted somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of those because there are about 140 things on the schedule. So of that CFP, about about 20 something, close to 30 percent was accepted. Uh, this year we expect similar numbers, but I can tell you already that we're outpacing last year. So we have a lot more proposals than we had last year at the same time. So we're about a week into the CFP. And we had pretty much double the number of proposals so far. And the, the the way that the dynamics of the CFP works, it's very much deadline driven. So most of the proposals come on the last day. Uh, so we expect that like by Sunday, we might be able to hit that number as we had last year, but it also might be larger. As for right now, as, as about seven, eight days into the process, we are basically double. So we already had like a bit more than a hundred proposals. And the same time last year, we had about 50 something. Yeah, thanks. So accept, acceptance rates will be based on, so the the template for the schedule will be very similar to last year. So it, that's still going to be 140-ish, 150 maybe slots. Uh, so that means that if we suddenly get a lot more proposals, then that acceptance rate will be smaller, but we expect that it's going to be you know similar, but maybe uh, a little bit higher than last year. Thanks, Artu. Um, there is a question on the chat from Victor. So can I start my visa process immediately? Uh, my proposal is accepting and still get the, to attend in person or should, should or I should before? Um, I can try to answer yeah. this question. So you can, you can actually you can actually apply for the visa invitation letter pretty much as soon as we start the ticket sales. Obviously, there would be a question on the um, form whether you are attending as a speaker. Um, and if at the points where you want to apply for the visa you you do not know yet, we could potentially discuss that with the program team to see whether there it's a possibility to to see whether we can accept or not but if that's not possible you can we can still so just simply send you the invitation letter without that information because your visa application is not dependent on that particular information um, if you for example have bought a ticket because you do not know whether your um, proposal will be accepted and if your proposal is accepted later on we can then also just refund the ticket that you previously have bought because as a speaker you are eligible for a free ticket so as soon as you have a ticket to attend the conference we will be able to send you that visa invitation letter for you to apply for the visa hope that's clear enough 
Thanks, Raquel. Uh, I hope uh, Raquel replies uh, to your question, Victor. And Raquel, if uh, Victor has more uh, person questions, is there any email um, that can use? Yes, um, feel free to send any questions to board at europython.eu. I will put that in the chat as well. I will happy to answer all questions. Thanks, Michael. Of course, if you don't remember any of these emails, you can contact us through the support of at europython.eu and we can forward whatever you want, whatever this email goes. Correct. Right. Um, so we have more questions. I think we covered pre uh, lots of things today. Um, I hope uh, it has been uh, a useful session, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you have more questions, just raise your hand and ask away. If there are more questions, maybe we can wrap up. And... Yeah, let's give uh, four more few seconds maybe for the last minute of questions. <laughs> I want to add uh, something to what David said. And uh, to my experience, I think that uh, many, many talks that I, I made in those session first or I was attending, they were a bit in the intermediate or a beginner uh, level. So my impression, uh, maybe this is not a fact, but uh, um, a, 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 not a majority, but many, uh, a, a big group of talks uh, is uh, either uh, for beginners or intermediate people. All right, I think uh, we run out of questions. I hope um, these uh, Ask Me Anything sessions has been useful to, and, and we reply to your uh, questions and doubts. And uh, we really look forward to your proposals in. Um, and uh, I uh, hope also that um, I actually I wish you luck to get accepted it and see you in a, in Prague maybe. So thanks uh, to Fanny, um, to Sebastian, Raquel uh, for NBB. Even he, he he drops already, but thanks for your availability and thanks for uh, your questions. So I think uh, we will have another session uh, as part of the mentorship program uh, later on, uh, but uh, 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 we will keep you informed uh, via our social networks. So uh, just keep uh, checking uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, and we will communicate uh, everything on the, on the social network. And uh, again, thanks again, and have a nice evening. Right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So